Hello everyone, and there's just a little bit Moira wanna talk about to do with all of the BlizzCon fun. The first one is there was a little snippet of backstory that largely passed me by until I started thinking about it, which subsequently led to the rock rock talk 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 talk. Mm -mm. Yo, I was going over Moira's backstory when something popped out that struck me as funny. Her hard thinking went into this, and to, to me, me, there's a lot more than you initially see. So, like a laser, let me phase you with this discovery, and then we're gonna go. <laughs> Sorry, I know I'm absolutely abysmal, but look, I stand by one simple principle in this life. Every time I stumble over my words and devolve into a beat to cover it up is my opportunities to practice something that I enjoy, but I am way too white to be doing, okay? So, to those of you that haven't closed the video yet, I am talking about the Venice Incident. There's not a lot of information on it, but it's a prominent feature in Moira's origin. So she was taken in by Blackwatch, secretly working, secretly messing with them on a genetic level, but something happened in Venice which led to her being discovered. Which, think about it, should be something absolutely huge. Because to discover Moira, you not only have to discover Overwatch's secret Black Ops team, you then have to discover a secret that that secret Black Ops team is trying their best to keep a secret, which is a whole extra layer of challenging. So clearly, whatever went down in Venice was an absolute turning point in Overwatch's downfall. In fact, it might have been very much the beginning of the end. Because if Overwatch officials are having to deny that this happened or any knowledge of affiliation, that means that the public was made aware of Moira at the very least. And if the public is made aware that Moira, a previously shamed, unethical, unethical, and no, I'm not going to do it again, I'm sorry. An unethical, almost monstrous to many people, diddler with your DNA then that is pretty poor by association, right? If you're there as just a random good old citizen of Overwatch, and you read in the paper that this previously discredited scientist, discredited because she was too inhumane, mind you, has been working secretly with the secret division of Overwatch that have previously already come under public ire for being ousted as committing atrocities around the globe, assassinations, kidnapping, just freely going wherever they please and committing really terrible missions. That is a secret that you don't want getting out. Now, this isn't technically the incident that disbanded Overwatch itself, although I do think this was probably the turning point. The there's no stopping this now. She did work for them a little bit longer because it says after Overwatch was disbanded, she went and did, you know, all sorts of stuff. Oasis, Talon, Modern Day, all of that jazz that I talked about in the last one, which means there was likely a period of time between this discovery and this, but it can't have been long and it cannot have been a smooth transition. I mean, there's just no way, because if the Overwatch officials are denying this, they're not going to be happy about it, right? Blackwatch kept this a secret from the rest of Overwatch, so they're not just going to suddenly wave it under the rug. There has to have been something that occurred some short period of time where things just fell apart, because otherwise her story would say after Overwatch got rid of her, after they forced Blackwatch to let her go, not after it was disbanded. In what world do the officials that deny this, that didn't know about this secret hiring by Blackwatch, allow it to continue. Maybe they were convinced, maybe Gabriel did convince them for a time, but it has to have rocked the boat in a meaningful way. So the question is then, what the hell happened in Venice to cause all this? Well, it undoubtedly has to do with a mission against Talon. And Talon were around during Overwatch still being a thing. They had lots of a little forays back and forth with each other. Hell, Talon are the ones that obviously captured Widowmaker, brainwashed her, and made her kill her husband in one of the top five practical jokes gone wrong. But 
I hear you ask. I mean, it doesn't have to be Talon. There could be many reasons to be in Venice, you know? It's not like Overwatch only for Talon. Well, you'd be right, except that the Doomfist comic reveals that there is a Talon base, a presence, maybe even their headquarters in Venice, where the Talon Council is located, and it's very likely that that was still the case when this happened. But that's the key, right? When did this happen? In my mind, it has to be between Uprising and Overwatch being disbanded. Overwatch really got the public spotlight, the heat, the, ah, uh, uh, should Overwatch be a thing, super focused on it post-Uprising. That whole thing was just a disaster for them. So, by this time, Blackwatch had been revealed, as I said earlier. They were doing really quite dark things in the name of, well, air quotes, good. And a lot of countries were kind of sick of Overwatch, and more specifically, Blackwatch operating Operating seemingly without anyone keeping them in check at just their own whim and countries were just like can you please stop all right can we have some chill from you and uh, this eventually culminated in something happening that triggered the United Nations getting together forcibly investigating Overwatch as an organization and discovering things that merited them forcing them to shut down. What if that thing they discovered, or at least a major contributing factor, was that the Spec Ops team previously ousted for committing atrocities around the world had secretly hired a scientist who was just barred and shunned from her communities for basically committing genetic atrocities and then finding they were getting her to mess with this atrocity committing Spec Ops team's DNA to make them even more atrocical. Okay, that is is, that is not good, right? That is, that is, at that point, you're like, ah, oh, fuck. And yeah, you get dismantled as an organization. But the thing is, the one event that caused that investigation to happen, it seems likely might actually be the Venice incident. Soldier and uh, Gabriel will have been arguing with each other in the two years following Uprising leading up to the dissolution of Overwatch about whether Blackwatch was right, you know, Gabriel doing some greater good stuff, Soldier like, it's not right, it's not what we do, all of uh, that type of thing. And I imagine there was a lot of tension building between them. And at some point during these two years, Gabriel and Blackwatch Watch will have secretly hired Moira and secretly kept operating, probably doing loads of missions without the explicit authorization or permission from Overwatch and Soldier, who's leading it as a whole, right? And it, it you, you know, you can see where this is going on, all right? Gabriel refusing to step into line, thinking that Soldier is weak for playing the political game and trying to keep countries happy, and uh, you can see the clash of personalities. So if one day, Overwatch got intel, or Blackwatch did, of Venice containing Talon's base, its leaders? Well, you can bet your ass he would not hesitate, and Gabriel would launch a strike on that. He would take his Blackwatch team, and he would try and end it once and for all, no doubt in my mind. And obviously, Talon are no schmucks, and it's equally likely they got wind of this, or were better defended than they expected, whatever. But clearly, it escalated, and it escalated to the point that the public could no longer be just dissuade from demanding to know what's happening. The idea that there was this full-on Blackwatch v Talon reckoning that went diabolically <laughs> wrong, and I... For one, would love to actually see that play out, right? And I would love to give you more information as the Venice. I have scoured and searched and there's just... It's so hard to place and predict what went down because the timelines are so short and the information so sparse. But the potential, so great. But the main reason I wanted to bring this up based on just a throwaway sentence of Venice incident is because to me, the Uprising event is the one event 
that's not repeatable. You can't just go, hey guys, once a year we're going to keep playing this uh, same moment of tragic Overwatch history in an endless cycle of mental torture for all of the agents as they have to keep remembering it. <laughs> Uprising, to me, is an event that once a year we will have a cool event based on a moment from Overwatch's past or maybe even expand the story forward into the future via it. And what would be a cooler mode to play through than a PvP story combo experience where one team plays as the defending Talon and the other as the attacking Blackwatch in a subterfuge off? That would be so much fun, even if you had it as just PvE, because granted, they wouldn't have Reaper to defend them, they wouldn't have Doomfist at that point, you know, it would be very sparse on the defending side, so maybe more PvE, but imagine playing through the mission as Black Ops and seeing where it all went wrong. If Minor wasn't likely to be out in the next month, it would be perfect to accompany her introduction into the game, but I think this might be an early tell that there's something going to be planned with that, even if it was just a general map, and it would probably be a hybrid map, a payload, and then a control point, finally, because it's Venice, right? You could all some more, eh? I, I think that's a venice song, I'd... I don't really know. And you could have the payload as a boat going along the canal, and you have to jump on and off it in order to push it slash stop it being pushed, and if you miss the jump and fall in the water at either side of the boat, then you die. That would be a hilarious map to play. So, you sneak in, air quotes, on the payload boat, you uh, push it to the Talon base, and then you fight your way through the inside to the inner council chamber, and if you cap the chamber, then you successfully got rid of Talon. That would be a really freaking fun game mode and Moira existing with this backstory lays the perfect foundation to replay a fantastically interesting moment albeit disastrous one from Overwatch's past, and if it does happen after Uprising, which makes the most sense, then every year we could get closer and closer to Overwatch disbanding until we find out really what fully went down, and then can start moving forward into the future of Overwatch's storyline, and have a Uprising-esque mission post-Winston recalling everyone and their first at little outing as new reformed Overwatch, and that just, that's exciting to me. It's like, come on, playing as Moira through that mission. Maybe, maybe they actually got Moira to help. Maybe, oh, oh, maybe this mission happened because Moira finally finished modifying Reaper, right? So he was like, I am Unstoppable Ghost Man. I'm going to storm the hell out of Talon's base. Maybe he succeeded, but was caught on video being wraithy. And obviously that was released to the public. And then they're like, Overwatch, why have you made a wraith man that's absorbing souls out of people? Um... I don't know how we made that. How did we make that? Oh my god, Moira, the genetic scientist is here. Oh, did we miss that? And that led to that chain of events happening. Maybe the successful finished creation of Reaper by Moira as a Overwatch secret Blackwatch scientist ironically triggered the events that ended Overwatch, caused a schism and divide between Morrison and Gabriel, because Morrison would be like, why have you done this? Why have you become this thing? And he's like, for the sake of Overwatch and Blackwatch and, you know, greater good. And he's like, no, and that's probably one of the fuels for the fire of their fight that caused the explosion which fully finished his transformation into Reaper, and oh my god, it makes sense! That's it's actually a real good job, Brain. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that one. Oh, that would be so cool if that, that would be so tragically awesome if that's actually how it went down. But talking of Overwatch's past, it would be remiss of me not to touch on the really cool little look at the early hero design concepts that we got shown at BlizzCon, because they're absolutely fantastic. I mean, there was so, so many of them. I mean, obviously, the best one by far is Mama Hong, who is clearly going to have the ultimate of...
<laughs> but all of them just look fantastic. Cyblade's got some great looking abilities. We've uh, got Firestarter, which just looks like a red version of Farrah. And like, the thing is, all of these are really cool to see, and a lot of them probably got amalgamated together into the heroes that we have now. I mean, Yetzi over there just became Winston Skin, so that's kind of sad for him, but it's just really cool to have this kind of retroactive look at what they were kind of thinking when coming up with this game. It really, really is nice. In fact, we always have these as well, which were basically the origin of Tracer, Reaper, Reinhardt, Farrah, Symmetra, Genji, Mercy, uh, Widowmaker, Sombra, and uh, Torbjorn, and that's fantastic. I love Spec Ops just being invisible because he's invisible. Hell, they were even toying around with having a jetpack monkey and a jetpack cat, and I know how much everyone wants jetpack cap. I love the right one, though. Just a fat, evil, sentient cat in a little hovering jetpack cat. Cat, 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 cat. No, I'm sorry. I won't. I won't. I won't. In a jetpack chair. That's just hilarious to me. Like, come on, please. Please give us it. Come on. It would be perfect because it's a cat. That one physically hurt to do. I am so sorry. And then something I really love is these potential maps. And honestly, I don't know why this isn't being talked about more, but the Iris is a potential map. And obviously the Iris is the Omnics, we will all become one within the Iris. And to me, the Iris was kind of the spiritual force, but this implies it's literally a place, an almost data center, and maybe that's what they're implying. Maybe the Iris is everybody's minds digitally uploaded and combined together in one super just hole of just ridiculousness. That could be kind of cool, right? I feel like more should be said about the fact that the Iris is apparently a giant blue glowing sphere. I mean, that's... That's much less mystical. How is that thing granting him fucking immortality and invulnerability? Well, not so much immortality. That's because he's a damn filthy Omnic. But sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I, I shouldn't hold on to old hatreds. But we do have some really cool ones. The Galapagos, an underwater map. Come on, we have to get that. That's so freaking cool. And we also got some old footage as they brought everything to life, but it's just a lot of fun, right? It's really cool to see these things go down. And one thing I do think is that some of these heroes might still end up happening, you know? I definitely think that some of them, maybe they didn't work really well at the time, like clearly Spec Ops, who eventually became Sombra, you know, it took a while for that to happen, so it's entirely possible that some of these do end up being changed, gone through iterations, they've been testing them over the last few years, and we do see a version of them. I mean, Iris is the Athena-looking robot, at least to me, that everybody really wanted as a hero, so that's still entirely possible going on there, but it is really, really cool to see a little bit what they used to look like, and honestly, I do think it's worth keeping these in your mind for when future stuff gets announced but for now my name has been Ray and I'll see you next time a oh, good boy Rage gaming with the video flow, shenanigans and overwatch And his fans all know that every single thumbnail that this man makes Without fail makes you do a double take Catching your attention with every verse See, say that you need healing but you're at his mercy Get it? Cause it's a pun On his channel, that's one of the better ones Widow is venomous, I see no end to this Cataclysm's imminent when rage is in his element Pandemonium is not familiar with irrelevance Maximum Genji beam, oh so elegant Joke's so funny causing you to cry Editing as quality as the noon is high Yo, concussion man, shoot to the sky Cap it all off with a goodbye